So let's students good morning everyone having done with your gst ka portion and customs ka portion the next chapter which is the last chapter which is ftp now ftp in your exam comes only for 5 to 7 marks 8 marks now 5 marks is the minimum maximum it can go to 6 7 8 marks also why sir because nowadays mcqs are there they can ask you a small mcq also in the exam so six to seven marks matters in the exam what i will go ahead and do is i will go ahead and teach you the whole of ftp in four charts which are there in the chart book after you are done with the chart book uh, discussion after we are done with the chart book uh, discussion all you have to do is solve your question answers and that much should be more than enough for you to go ahead and attempt your examination wala question right everyone Chalo. let's go ahead and start our discussion please come to the ftp ka chart everyone ftp for ftp all the question answers which i have to cover also i'll be covering with the discussion only right everyone so when i'm going ahead and discussing i'll be covering the question answers also let's go ahead and get it started everyone over here foreign trade policy what do you mean by foreign foreign means outside india trade policy now why do we need first of all a foreign trade policy means what is the policy which india is going to follow Regarding the foreign trade means when they want to trade outside India, when they want to trade outside India, what is their policy going to be? Are we clear everyone? Foreign trade policy, every five year a foreign trade policy is being prepared. Now foreign trade policy 2015 to 20 is existing as of now. Okay, everyone over here. Now the original foreign trade policy which was there, this was valid only till 31st March 2020 but in 2020 COVID came and hence this was extended. So first this was extended from 31st March 2020 to 31st March 2021 then it got extended till 31st 30, uh, 30th September 2021 then again 31st March 2022 and now it is extended till 30th of September 2022 right everyone. So if you are a student going ahead and writing your exam in November 22, this foreign trade policy is only going to be applicable for you. If you are going to write your exam in May 23, Baba, don't worry about it. Whatever the changes in the foreign trade policy, the new foreign trade policy, if they go ahead and announce, then whatever is the changes in the new foreign trade policy, I will anyways be going ahead and providing on YouTube. Right, everyone? Everyone over here. But as of now, the basics for the foreign trade policy for November and May, it is going to be the same. Basic is going to be the same. Detail might be little bit here and there. It go, it's going to change. Let's go ahead and understand foreign trade policy 2015-20. Now extend it till 30th September 2022. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. What is actually the foreign trade policy? Foreign trade policy is a set of guidelines and instruction issued by the central government in matters relating to foreign trade government see baba one thing you have to remember whenever it comes to foreign trade you tell me one thing if i am selling goods to my brother my brother is selling to my mother my mother is selling to me will we ever become rich no i have to go ahead and sell it to outsider in the same way if india wants to become rich india will have to go ahead and sell the goods outside india get foreign currency from outside india only then india will become rich so baba foreign trade policy is the main thing which is there, which they go ahead and see is, okay, your export potential should go up, you should earn foreign currency from outside India. Now, your income out from outside India should be less than your spending outside India. You spend 1 crore and you earned only 50 lakh from outside India, will you ever become rich? No. So, your spending should be 10 crore, Spend your earnings should be 10 crore, spending should be only 4-5 crore. There should be a favorable balance. Are you guys able to understand? So, they are going ahead and telling, they are telling that it's a set of guidelines and instruction issued by the central government in matters relating to foreign trade, import and export of goods. It aims in developing export potential. Where is the Indian goods requirement being there? So they have gone ahead and formed councils which are there. Councils will go and search. Where is the council will go ahead and search? Where is the Indian goods requirement being there? Export councils are created right now leather ka one council is there for textile one council is there they go ahead and search okay where is the need of indian goods being there then improving export performance encouraging foreign 
trade, creating favorable balance of payment is also very necessary because exports should be more than your imports. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. So, foreign trade policy is created every 5 years. 2015 to 20, they created a foreign trade policy that, sir, this 5 year, what is our objective going to be? How are we going to encourage the foreign trade? How are we going to get more foreign currency into the country? How are we going to increase the export? All those things are going to be told over here. Means, what is India's policy going to be for the next 5 years with respect to import and export? That is generally being told in foreign trade policy. Everyone over here. Now, you have the Ministry of Commerce and Industry which is there. Ministry of Commerce may... If you go to the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, just a minute everyone, ah, this is the Ministry of Commerce and Industry which is there, here if you go ahead and see in the Ministry of Commerce, uh, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the Department of Commerce is there, okay everyone, they are, their main vision is what? To make India a major player in the world trade and for function of the department is to formulate, implement and monitor the foreign trade policy. The main job is what? Their main job is to formulate the foreign trade policy, make it implemented and also monitor that it is being followed. Now here along with the ministry there is an attached office, there is an attached office which is of the director general of foreign trade, director general of foreign trade organization which is headed by the boss. The boss ka name is Director General of Foreign Trade. If you go to the ministry, here you will be able to see there are attached office. Now in the attached office, you will see Director General of Foreign Trade. This Director General of Foreign Trade, he only sleeps, wakes up every time he sees how in India can be a major player in the foreign market. Are we clear? How we can grow our export potential? All these things are being seen by the Director General of Foreign Trade. Everyone, so it is headed by whom? Director General of Foreign Trade, who will basically formulate in the Ministry of Commerce. We have whom? Director General of Foreign Trade, who is the basically heading the office, where he is going ahead and making sure that he will formulate, control and supervise the foreign trade policy. Now, foreign trade policy 2015 and 20, who gave you the power to go ahead and make the foreign trade policy? Someone should have given you the power. No. So, we have the legislation governing the foreign trade policy, which is the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992, which goes ahead and gives. In that, section number 5 is there and section number 5 goes ahead and gives central government, the power that central government may from time to time formulate, announce by notification what? In the official gadget, the foreign trade policy. Now, central government can go ahead and announce. Central government ka department is only depart government ka department is only department of commerce. In that, we have the director general of foreign trade who will basically go ahead and make this foreign trade policy, control this foreign trade policy, and supervise this foreign trade policy. Now, I hope you guys are able to understand that the foreign trade policy, now what are the guiding principle when he is going ahead and formulating the foreign trade policy, what is he looking at? He will go ahead and see the generation of employment should be there. Yes, everyone, foreign trade policy should be as such because of which employment is generated. Increased value addition, keeping in mind with making India vision. India may, India may the goods which are produced, India may lot of value addition should be there in the goods so that India, make in India is being promoted. Might be you get raw material from outside India, but in India you produce. For an example, Tesla wanted to come to India. What they went in and told them, you set up a plant in India, we'll go ahead and help you with everything. They wanted to generate employment. They wanted to go ahead and see to it that make in India vision is being fulfilled. Are we guys able to understand? So, government ka main objective is what? To go ahead and make sure that make in India is done. Are we clear? So, what are the guiding principles when they are making the foreign trade policy? They want to see that, sir, first of all, generation of employment should be there. Secondly, increased value addition in India should be there. Make in India has to be promoted. Then, ease of doing business. Baba, all the importer, exporters should be having ease of doing business. They should not be having lot of headaches. Simplicity should be there. Icegate.gov.in has been introduced. Now, in Icegate, you can go ahead and online file all your documents, etc. So, they are trying to do ease of doing business. Then, trade facilitation by simplifying and extensive use of 
e governance online e governance is basically used encouraging commerce e commerce export of specified product online e commerce ka export of specified product they are promoting encouraging manufacture and export they want more ex more india may you produce more you produce in india and you export foreign currency will come so they are promoting sez eou stp software technology park electronic hardware technology park biotechnology park these people they are given lot of benefits in foreign trade policy so they can import without paying any duty they can export and earn foreign currency so they have been given lot of benefits the next one over here is duty credit script baba government is going in and telling ramesh this item is make in india you export this if you export this now i will give you chocolate chocolate is script sir i am making 2% less profit if i am going in and exporting no percent no problem this 2% i'll give you chocolate i'll give you script you can use the script to pay your custom duties so government will give what duty credit script to encourage what export of specified product whichever make in india product is not going outside india they will promote it then export of service also then they are telling special effort to resolve quality complaint and trade dispute india and some exporter imp exporter importer etc whoever is there anyone has a dispute which is there from outside india see might be i went and exported to us and there is a trade dispute which is there might be the goods which i have sent is bad india's name will go bad so they make sure that all those trade disputes are being resolved so these are the guiding principle the main guiding principle is generation of employment and going ahead and making sure that make in india vision is there india may more 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 production is there is of doing business is there now for going ahead and making sure that this make in india initiative is being uh, this all these guiding principle what are the measure they have taken supporting the guiding principle means what have they had done okay you are thinking that i will go ahead and do ease of doing business what is that you have gone ahead and done they have gone ahead and introduced measures to support the guiding principle number 1 number of document for import or export reduced to 3 if you go ahead and see if you go ahead and import from india or export from india they are telling if you export you need bill of lading airway bill or railway receipt number or postal receipt bus that's all plus commercial invoice come packing list sir what do you mean by packing list in a container whatever is being packed that is known as a packing list then sir shipping bill or bill of export or postal bill of export it means only three document so ease of doing business is coming then they are telling import ka case mein also same whatever your bill of lading etc is there invoice is there plus import ka case mein you need bill of entry and your clearance will be done so they are going ahead and making sure that ease of doing business is there how by going ahead and reducing the number of document only to 3 remember what are the documents which are uh, required for import and export how ease of doing business has come then 24 baba are you guys able to understand the foreign trade policy which is there is basically the main policy the boss has framed the policy custom department is just following the policy are you guys able to understand everyone 24 bar 7 custom clearance has to be there it means custom department has to make sure that yes 24 bar 7 clearance has to be given so sir 24 bar 7 space clearance for special import single window scheme has to be introduced and swift has been introduced single window clearance has been introduced in custom so whatever is told in foreign trade policy has to be followed by the custom they should make sure if foreign trade policy may they told these goods are restricted these goods are prohibited custom department has to make sure that when goods come so foreign trade policy basically it is under the ministry of commerce custom cbi custom is under the cbic which is ministry of finance so both are different but this people frame the policy those people follow the policy he is the main boss those people are going ahead and making sure that yes the policy which they have told is being implemented are we clear everyone everyone over here then prior online facility baba these people told i don't know you have to go ahead and see, make ease of business you have to introduce swift to so custom may swift has to be introduced they are telling prior online facility for filing shipping bill before shipment has to be introduced so now shipping bill has to be filed first then late export order is given then people go ahead and export so sir prior filing of shipping bill has to be introduced online filing of application to obtain import export code and various authorization and script if you go ahead and see over here if i go to the director general of foreign trade ka office director general of foreign trade dgft director general of foreign trade ka office if you go over here you will be able to see e fast baba
Just a minute. If you see over here, online filing of import export code is there. Are you able to see? Now, yes, sir, I want chocolate. Sir, you can go over here. One minute. You can go over here and see. Lot of things have been made online now. Can you see over here? Sir, I want an advance authorization. I want a DFIA. I want export promotion capital goods scale authorization. Can you see? Lot of things have been made online now. So, basically, they are trying to get e-governance. Online filing of forms. So they are telling online filing of application before to obtain import export code and various authorization or script. Also, you can go ahead and take it online. So these are these are the basically uh, measures which have been taken to support the guiding principle. Now, sir, what is the role of the Director General of Foreign Trade? He will formulate, he will make the policy, he will control the policy and he'll supervise the foreign trade policy. He will issue authorization for import or export. See, Baba, sir, I want to import. Sir, you go to him, sir, please let me go ahead and import duty free. I don't have the money to pay the duty. If I pay the duty later, you will give me 98% to one thing. No, sir, give me an authorization. You can go and ask him authorization over here. Can you see? This is the Director General of Foreign Trade ka office. But our Director General of Foreign Trade is not one person. It is like they have a lot of regional offices which are there. You can go to the regional office also. Head office is also there. Are we clear? So you have to go to the regional office. Now, see here. Sir, can you see? I want an advance authorization. Can you see over here? You can go and ask him online. Advance authorization. Next, sir, grant of import-export code. Did I just now show it to you? Show that sir, you can go online and apply. Sir, monitoring the export obligation. He told, see, you get pre capital goods but you have to export at least you have to go ahead and get foreign currency six times of the duty which you have saved he will tell you those export obligation are you going ahead and meeting or not he will make sure that you are meeting it if you are not meeting he will penalize all those things are there issue orders with respect to interpretation of provision of foreign trade policy if you have any doubt in foreign trade policy understanding he will go ahead and issue order and if i don't if the, sir i don't know how to classify my goods he can go ahead and help you with classification also everyone over here now when you read the foreign trade policy no there are nine chapters which are there in foreign trade policy if you actually go to the foreign trade policy it's a big book which is there now nine chapters all are there applicable for you but out of that the seven chapters which are there are the most important one now every chapter what i've gone ahead and created is small small paragraph which one how much you should go ahead and read everyone the first chapter can you see chapter number one chapter number two if you see over here chapter number three is there then if you go next you have chapter number four is there you have chapter number five is there six is there if you see below chapter number seven is there other than that one chapter number seven and eight is there okay total bakwas everyone over here now let's go ahead and start with the first first chapter now for five marks how much more will you read correct nine chapters are there for five marks so basically they have gone ahead and summarized the chapters also and okay. everyone legal framework and trade facilitation first we'll understand legal framework which is the law which is guiding the creation of foreign trade policy foreign trade policy regulation and development act everyone here the legal framework what is the law foreign trade development and regulation act 2019-92 is going ahead and helping you in uh, that is the law which has gone ahead and told okay fine you can go ahead and create a foreign trade policy legal basis and trade facilitation legal basis is the foreign trade policy is notified by central government in exercise with the power confirmed under section number five of the foreign trade development and regulation act duration of the foreign trade policy is till what date baba this should be 31st okay till 30th of september 2022 sir dgft may by measure of public notice notify handbook of procedure appendices and ayat form everyone listen gst may law was created the gst act went ahead and gave further power to go ahead and make the rules the same way foreign trade policy is created now in the foreign trade policy they have written that further whatever forms to operate the foreign trade policy any rules regulation is required who can go ahead and create dgft G dgft may by public notice notify what handbook of procedure baba procedures means what rules etc only for act it is rules which are given the same way he can go ahead and notify the handbook of procedure appendices and ayat form ayat form means all those forms which will be required in your 
foreign trade basically for doing foreign trade whatever forms etc will be required sir for an example i want import export code which form will be required all those things they will go ahead and notify everyone over here so basically i hope you guys are able to understand that customs is basically going ahead and following just what is told by the foreign trade policy are we clear in foreign trade policy if something is restricted prohibited Customs has to make sure that you can't get it from outside India or you can't import export from outside India also. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, trade facilitation and ease of doing business. Can you see over here trade facilitation? What do you mean by trade facilitation? They are trying to create simplified procedure and use of e-governance. Objective of trade, trade facilitation is priority of the government for cutting down what? Transaction cost and time. DGFT is committed to function as a facilitator of import and export are we clear everyone I, sir now as a trade facilitation measure what have they done issue of import export code electronically online you go and apply you will get import export code they have gone ahead and launched 24 bar 7 clearance swift has been launched as ease of doing business sir facility of deferred payment you remembered everyone deferred payment facility has been has been given to authorized public undertaking it has been given to authorized economic operator tier 2 tier 2 tier 2 and tier 3 how why is it given because of the trade facilitation measure of foreign trade policy then single window interface for facilitating trade and authorized economic operator program sir all these people who are there they are enrolled under authorized economic operator program those people are trustworthy people of the government are we clear everyone so this all these programs have been launched under trade facilitation only now they have gone ahead and i told you that they can go ahead and create handbook of procedure so we have volume one and we have volume two volume one says about the procedural aspect of foreign trade policy and appendices and the various ir near form right everyone now procedural aspect and forms are basically it's the rules which are guiding the act are we clear so for policy it is the procedures for act rules policy procedures can i go ahead everyone next sir now volume 2 is cion cion is required what do you mean by cion standard input output norm everyone listen what do you mean by standard output input norm you went and told the dgft that sir i want to go ahead and import duty free shirt ka clothes sir see sir i have an order for one lakh shirt if you allow me to import cloth duty free then i will export and get foreign currency he will become very happy but he'll allow you to import only that much cloth which is told in standard input output norm if standard input output norm it is told see standard input for the output output is one lakh shirt for one shirt one meter is required he will allow you how many units one lakh meter he will allow you so that is told in standard input output norm what is told in the standard input out sir to make one bottle one kg steel is required i have one lakh bottles ka order what to do one lakh kg he will go ahead and tell me okay you can go ahead and import then duty free imports are based on cion sir dgft is basically the policy maker the boss for import and export customs ensure that the policies are implemented everyone over here now sir dgft director general of foreign trade does not have an army of its own they go ahead and take the help of hey customs you make sure you don't allow this import you don't allow this export they will go ahead and tell the custom now they will go ahead and tell the rbi hey, rbi you make sure foreign currency has come are we clear everyone so all these people are basically supporting whom the director general of foreign trade other authority is dealing with the foreign trade policy is ministry of finance ka cbic customs and gst department facilitate implementation of foreign trade policy custom department is responsible for clearance of import or export goods right everyone then rbi formulates policy relating to management of money including payment and receipt of foreign currency also monitors receipt and payment you told sir i will go ahead and export i told okay export on foreign currency are you earning or not earning the rbi will make sure that you are going ahead and getting that money state gst departments also go ahead and support him in going ahead and implementation of the foreign trade policy now this was your chapter number one legal framework what is the legal framework everyone foreign trade policy 1520 is the legal is created under the foreign trade development and regulation act 1992 section number five went ahead and gave the power 
then sir trade facilitation and ease of doing business baba they have gone ahead and simplified the procedure ease of doing business they have got so that in ease of business ease of doing business what they have done they have got import export code online application 24 bar 7 facilities there for clearance swift has been launched etc deferred payment facility is allowed so that quick clearance can be done all those things are under the foreign trade policy now everyone over here general provision relating to import and export they are telling exports and imports are free unless regulated means all the imports and exports are free unless they are regulated sir except when they are regulated by prohibition sometimes they go ahead and prohibit sometimes they go ahead and impose some restriction or sometimes exclusively to state trading enterprises as laid down in the itc hs everyone listen to me very carefully when you go to the director general dgft over here if you see see can you see import and export policy for every you remember hsn code say we did classification under custom there we did to find out in customs we do classification to find out what is the rate of duty but here we find out the correct classification to find out whether, what is the import and export policy. Is it freely importable? Is it restricted? Is it prohibited? Everyone see. For an example, this is also import export code HS. But this is import export code harmonized system for telling you the policy, not the rate. And here they will go ahead and tell you, sir, these are the items which are prohibited. Can you see over here? These are the items which are restricted. Can you see? So here, import policy view. If you go ahead and see over here, how many chapters I had gone ahead and told you? There are approximately 98 chapters I had gone ahead and told you. All the chapters ke liye. Can you, do you remember? The first chapter was live animal. Now, live animal may, sir, can I go ahead and import? Can you see import policy, export policy, both are being told? Import policy, export policy. Whether this item can you import? Whether this item can you export? Who has told this import export policy? Sir, DGFT and customs has to make sure that, sir, nobody gets that item if it is prohibited or restricted. Restricted may authorization is required. Everyone, if I see the import policy over here, you will see, see, these are the items here. Sir, this pure breed is restricted, means you need a permission for getting this. Are you guys able to understand? Now, see, everywhere it is restricted. Yes, everyone? Now, if I go ahead and tell you, supposingly, uh, coffee tea. Coffee tea may import policy. They will go ahead and say, Sir, free, free, free. You can get all these items. Free, 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 free. For some item, if they see, see, light, here, light, black, pepper, black, pepper, all these are prohibited. As per the foreign trade policy, it is being prohibited. Uh, can you see over here? Now, if they have told, who has told in the foreign trade policy? DGFT, hey, prohibited. Customs have to make sure if you are getting from outside, hey, prohibited. So, customs is basically acting for whom? The DGFT. Not DGFT, for the foreign trade policy. I hope everyone is clear, everyone. Now, so they are going ahead and telling, ex uh, generally, import and exports are free. Unless they are regulated, prohibited or restricted. Can you see over here? I have, if you see over here, you will be able to see, regulate, uh, Can you see the items are restricted? Can you see the items are prohibited? This items which are restricted, prohibited, restricted item, you will be able to get only after you go ahead and take the permission. Sir, prohibited item, you can't get it at all. Sir, state trading enterprises, government ka some organizations are there. Through them only you can go ahead and import. Can you import? So you call the uh, Dubai ka person. Hey, send me one liter oil, petrol I want, one barrel oil you send me. Can you do it? Not possible. Why? Because that has to be imported only through state trading enterprises. Otherwise, everyone will say, hey, oil price will go up. Hey, you do one thing. One full barrel you send me. I will go ahead and refine in my home. Can you do it? No, Baba. Those items you can't go ahead and import. Those they have gone ahead and told. You, these are the items. Can you see? Rice, basmati, copra, broken rice, motor spirit, all this petrol etc you can't get it it has to be imported only through state trading enterprises which are basically organizations and i will be talking about it can i go ahead everyone so sir first of all did you understand the second one over here is mandatory document only three documents may import export will happen sir authorization is not you went to the dgft sir allow me to import free raw material i will not pay duty i will export he told me hey, get lost run away you are telling, no, I want it. Baba, authorization is not your right. 
no person can claim authorization as a right and dgft shall have the power only if he dreams that ah foreign currency is going to come he will give it to you they will tell hey run away sir dgft have power to refuse to grant or renew the same with under the within the director general uh, foreign trade development and regulation act everyone over here indian trade classification indian trade classification harmonized system of export and import sir it's a compilation of code of all the merchandise goods for import or export sir india maintains nationalized hs of eight digit which is their hsn code is how much eight digit sir the import or export baba here we will not read sir first schedule custom duty rate ex second schedule export duty rate baba they have gone ahead and told in the first schedule over here the import policy did i show you the import policy now whether restricted pre etc sir schedule 2 so the import export policy for all the goods are indicated against each itc hs if you guys go ahead and see over here against each i against each item can you see over here import export policy is told see sir this is the import policy so for against every item it is told whether it is free import policy whether it is free sir whether it is restricted prohibited they have gone ahead and told so against every itchs you told sir my goods are classifying in this in customs if you tell me that classification will give you rate but in foreign trade policy if you classify you will get whether this, this item is freely exportable importable prohibited restricted or only you can do import or export through state trading enterprises are you guys clear so you will have to go ahead and see over here see the import export policies for all goods are indicated against each if i each code basically hsn code schedule 1 will give you import policy schedule 2 will give you export policy are you guys able to link it to the website which i am showing you yes sir policy is with respect to each code sir each code whether it is prohibited item not permitted restricted with permission you can get it sir state trading enterprise i'll talk about it okay free do not require any license or permission restricted need some permission sir prohibited so you can't get only prohibited item you can't get it they have told in baggage also you can't get so customs has to make sure are we clear everyone next sir interpretation of the policy who will do the interpretation any doubt dgft the boss director general decision of the dgft shall be final and binding with respect to interpretation of policy classification provision in handbook appendices and format sir what do you mean by import export code they can go ahead and ask you in the exam sir it import export code no export or import without import export code did i show you over here that you have to go and apply for online 10 10 characters alpha numeric number man not number mandatory for import or export application is this form with applicable fees shall be submitted with the dsc baba digital signature application shall be submitted online in the dgft.gov.in did i show it to you sir dgft dgft.gov.in see here 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 apply today you apply okay everyone next sir don't do it <laughs> not required then with the following document digital photo photo of the applicant copy of the pan cancel check of the entity now you know what happened pan is import export code with effect from 1st of july 2017 your pan number which is there that will only be your import export code but you can't go ahead and say that sir i don't have to up, up, uh, apply you have to apply they will allocate your pan only only after they allocate your pan as your import export code that's an import export code otherwise it is only pan can I go ahead? No, sir. From today, I will also start importing, exporting. My pan is my IC. Baba, you have to take approval from him first. Then, now if goods are liable for, for GST, when you are going ahead and filing your bill of entry, you should also go ahead and mention your GSTN number because you will get the credit. Then, sir, import export code allocated to an applicant is permanent unless cancelled. Sir, UN holder, UN issued by GSTN number and authenticated by the dgft also has to be used basically when they are going ahead and importing exporting they can go ahead and use their uin number unique identification number then sir export or import of restricted goods only in accordance with authorization either you have to go ahead and take authorization from dgft or permission in accordance with the prescribed 
procedure. The next one over here is state trading enterprises. There are some items which I just went ahead and showed you. Sir, I want petrol in my home. One pull drum I will fill and keep. Every day I will only fill in my car. Baba, not allowed. See, state trading enterprises are government or non-governmental enterprises including marketing board which deals with what? Goods for export and for imports. They or any goods import or export of which is governed by exclusive or special privileges granted to ST may be imported or exported by ST as per the condition specified in ITC HS. Everyone over here, if I go ahead and show you over here, see here state trading enterprises item, all these are all state trading enterprises and they will tell you the policy also. Can you guys see over here? See, sir, superior kerosene oil. I want superior kerosene oil. You called outside India and got it. You can't do it. You have to get it through them. Are we clear, everyone? These are the items. Urea. You All these things, you can't get it. And they have told what is the policy. Can I go ahead, everyone? See, they have told the policy conditions, etc. Everyone over here. They are telling DGFT may grant an authorization to any person to import or export notified, goods notified for exclusively trading through state trading enterprise, DGFT can give authorization to any person. Reliance went and told, sir, we have to import crude oil from outside India, allow us. So, DGFT might go ahead and allow them. Are we clear everyone? Rakesh went and told, he'll tell, okay, get lost. Authorization is not your right. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, why we went ahead and understood chapter number one. Chapter number one went ahead and told legal framework and trade facilitation. Second chapter went ahead and told, sir, general provision regarding import and export. The third chapter which is there, Baba, this I will talk at the last, okay? Now, the third chapter which is there is telling export from India scheme. Everyone listen to me very carefully. They have launched various scheme. Are it chocolate? So that people are very excited. Ah, ha, ha, I will get chocolate. So they will go ahead and export. Correct or not? Yeah, they have to show you chocolate. No, only then you will be happy. So they will tell you, hey, you export. I will give you this. I will give you that. I will give you star. You will become status holder. Full status I will give you. All those things they want to give. So that... So, people will go ahead and export. Export from India scheme. Baba, their main objective is to export. Export, export, export. Earn foreign currency. Import, restrict. Make in India. Objective to provide reward to exporter to offset infrastructural inefficiencies and associated costs. Sir, if, if, I go, I'm, if I'm going ahead and importing this, sir, sir, too much of loss is there. Okay, don't worry. I will give you scripts. Nature of the reward is duty credit script shall be granted as reward under R-O-D-T-E-P which I am going to explain later. Are we clear everyone? Now, they are telling scripts or goods imported uh, using the scripts are freely transferable. Either the scripts which are issued to you, sir I got a script, chocolate, you can give it to your friend also. Or you can import the goods using those scripts, pay the basic custom duty using the script and those goods also you can go ahead and transfer to your friend. And can be used, what can you use the script for? Payment of basic custom duty, additional duties of custom but not GST. Scripts are valid for how many months? 24 months. Now in order to go ahead and encourage people to export from India, they give status status holder who are very very big people who are going ahead and exporting in huge quantity they are telling status holder business leaders who have excelled in their international trade and have successfully contributed to countries foreign trade who are the status holder are baba status they'll put stars you know stars will be put on you that you are a status holder Business leader, these are business leader. You would have seen that Surat ka one exporter is there, diamond exporter. He is going in and exporting so big exports which are there. They are, those people are status holder. They are getting huge money into India which are foreign currency. Indian government is very happy with them. And telling, ah, you are status holder. So, state business leaders who have excelled in international trade and have successfully contributed to countries foreign trade are known as status holder. All exporters of goods and service having ISE shall be eligible for recognition. Okay, everyone, it is not that only one person is eligible. Any person is eligible, but first you prove yourself. Recognition depends upon export performance. Applicant shall be categorized as status holder. As such means status holder upon achievement of export performances. Everyone over here, they have told if you perform, only then you are status holder. Otherwise, nothing holder. 
कैन आई गोड एवरी वन हियर ड्यूरिंग द करेंट एंड प्रिसीडिंग थ्री इयर्स का परफॉर्मेंस देव सी वन इयर यू परफॉर्म बिकॉज कोविड वॉज देयर एक्सपोर्टेड मास्क एक्सेट्रा टू मच नेक्स्ट इयर ओन वर्स नो परफॉर्मेंस they are telling those people are not status holder they are telling status holder means during the current year and preceding two financial three financial year we'll see in case of gems and jewelries two financial year last two financial year ka performance we'll see and if you are export performance which if you are exporting by c then fob if you are exporting by road it is for so they are telling get sir freight on road and free on board they are telling sir if you are exporting If you are one star, you will be given one star when your exports are three million US dollar, sir. Not three rupees, three million US dollar. That is your current year ka performance and last three years ka performance will be seen. Then, sir, they are saying two star will be given twenty five million US dollar, three star hundred million, four star five hundred million, five star. Two two thousand million. Now all these people who are given status will have lot of benefits which are there under foreign trade policy. They are telling privileges, authorization, and custom clearance for export or import on self declaration. They can do self declaration and they can get import and export clearances. Fixation of Sion, Baba standard input output norm. Sir, I want to get these goods into India free, but I don't know what is the Sion. They will fix it for you within sixty days. No delays. Within 60 days, by the norms committee, exemption from compulsory negotiation or documents through bank. They are not required to give bank guarantee and all too much. Then exemption from furnishing. See exemption from bank guarantee. All these compulsory documents which are there, those are also not required. Sir, two star and above can establish their export house houses. So if you are a status holder, you can own own a warehouse. You can get goods, keep it over there, manufacture on your own, and export outside India. Are you guys able to understand? So in customs, we learned about the warehouse. Here we are learning who can establish their own warehouse. Three star or above will be entitled to accredited client program. You will be accredited. Accredited client program means you are a accredited partner of the government. Government is selling. Yes, he is an Indian who is going and an importing, exporting. So you are accredited by the government. Then. Baba, see, I am not teaching you all these things which are accredited client program. Not required. Enough. Everyone, three star or above shall be entitled to accredited client program. Entitled to export freely, exportable item, free of cost for export promotion. They will give you. Hey, you can export sample. Sir, limit gems and jewelry. Wala. One minute. No, no. Exporter of. Gems and jewelry, articles of gold and precious metal. He can export only how much sample? One crore ka up and or two percent of average annual realization during the preceding three financial year. Last three years me, what was your average realization? Supposing last three years say you are realizing hundred hundred crore rupees every year. Hundred crore ka two percent, two crore or one crore, whichever is lower. Are we clear? For other than this, all these people, gems and jewelry, gold wala people. Other people can go ahead and export two percent of the export realization during the preceding three license year. Are we clear, everyone? If they go ahead and ask you about status holder, very very important for exam. Please remember. Now the next one over here, the the third page which is there is the most important page which is there. Everyone over here. Now this is R O D T E P scheme. Everyone listen. Earlier there was M E I S scheme and S E I S scheme, merchandise export from India scheme and services export from India scheme. What is merchandise export? If you are exporting goods from India, government used to give chocolate, saying Ramesh, these bottles made in India bottles. Why are you not exporting? I told sir, these bottles. If I am exporting this other bottle, no, sir, I am getting more profit. This bottle two percent less profit is there. They used to give you two percent script. saying okay keep chocolate are we clear that was under merchandise export if you are a service export from india scheme if you are exporting services then they used to give under c script used to be given but now mes was not as per the international organization which is their world custom organization they told that sir this is not done mes scheme is not right so it was not as per the international parameters and hence it was removed and sci scheme ici has removed from your book Are we clear? And now government has launched one new scheme, which is R O D T E P scheme, which we have to go ahead and learn. This is one of the most important scheme which they can go ahead and ask you.
everyone over here now so sir what is rod tep from 1st of january 2021 mes has been phased out and remission of duty remission of duty and taxes on exported product sir if i am going in and exporting some product on which i have gone ahead and paid some duty that duty i have not got duty drawback anywhere they are telling still that duty ka rod tep scheme mein some chocolate will be given to you are we clear everyone they are telling remission of duties and taxes on the exported product benefits shall be available to exporter are we clear mes is not there don't worry still you go ahead and export we will give you rod tp me benefit i will show you how is rod tp see can you see rod tp yes everyone are here here regulatory framework can you see rod tp you saw c on over there c on is also there see now everyone over here can you see the rate under rod tp now they are telling over here see ramesh you go and export fresh water we will give you rod tp me percentage of the fob baba additionally they are giving you hey take chocolate 0.5% can you see over here for every item whenever a person is going and exporting they have given under rod tp that sir you will get this much percentage of the fob as what as rod tp ka benefit you know where they will put this benefit you remember e credit ledger under customs also will be maintained now in that customs ka e credit ledger they will go ahead and put this rod tp ka benefit either they will give physical script but nowadays physical script and all is not given they put the money in your e credit ledger which will be maintained under the custom automated system are we clear everyone everyone over here listen so what they are telling is remission of duty and taxes on exported product benefits shall be available to exporter and sir it aims to boost export yes or no they are giving you chocolate chocolate will boost export saying that yes they are giving me 2.5% of the fob as duty return so sir i imported exported as per all industry rate etc whatever you are getting duty drawback all those things you leave it under custom other than that under ftp they are telling we'll give you fob ka 1 percentage also as rod tp scheme ke under benefit tick it aims to boost export by allowing reimbursement of taxes percentage way of reward is to be issued in form of transferable script or electronic script means they will give you either transferable script or online script which is there are we clear or might be they can go ahead and credit it to your e credit ledger which is there right everyone next the scheme is based on globally accepted principle why mes was deleted because it was not based on globally accepted principle right everyone baba india is a member of lot of uh communities which are there worldwide now you can't go ahead and start giving chocolate to your people saying do this do this do this export this item i'll give you more chocolate so that was not in in par with the globally accepted principle hence they had to delete it the scheme is based rod tp is based on the principle that taxes and duties should not be exported baba export the goods not your taxes because if you export the taxes the goods will become expensive if the goods are expensive in the international market your no one will buy so it says the scheme is based on international it's it's on the principle globally accepted principle that taxes and duties should not be accepted uh, sorry exported and it should be either exempted or remitted it should either be exempted on your exported product means if i am going in and exporting something the duties which are there should be exempted or if i paid them they should give it back to me everyone this scheme provides for remission remission means reduce remission of the amount in the form of duty credit script credited in exporter's ledger account with custom what is the ledger account everyone e credit ledger they are telling we will go ahead and give you duty credit script everyone what is the objective to refund the unrefundable whatever duty is taxes you were not getting the refund earlier now they are telling we will go ahead and give you in the rod tp scheme everyone here regulate uh, see rod tp when you go you will see over here see they are telling all this item may can you see over here 2.5% per kg with cap that sir per kg you will go ahead and fix how much 16 rupees only can i go ahead everyone next otherwise people will again start cheating to refund currently unrefunded tax rod tp scheme was introduced sir number 1 duties 
taxes levied at the center state local levy born on the exported product sir these are the taxes which are levied i am not getting a refund of it sir please do something then they will go ahead and give you rodt pc is there are we clear then including prior stage cumulative idts indirect taxes on your goods and service in the production then such indirect taxes in respect of distribution of the exported product which has been basically born on the goods what are the silent features number 1 it seeks to refund to the exporter exporter the embedded central state local levies or taxes that are so far not been refunded or rebated means what are the taxes you were not refunded now they will go ahead and refund under rodtp they will not refund you they will go ahead and give you chocolate which is 2.5% 0.5% etc they will give you as a script duty credit script is issued a in lieu of remission of duty or levy or on any material used in the manufacture or processing of goods for carrying out what for carrying out an operation on such goods that are exported so they are telling over here that sir we will go ahead and give you what duty credit is issued they will issue you duty credit in lieu of remission of any duties taxes levy chargeable on any material used in manufacture or processing of goods or for carrying out any operations on such goods in india that are exported where such duties taxes are not exempted not remitted or credited in any other scheme so if you have gone ahead and paid any taxes in india which were not being refunded which were not being remitted under any other scheme then they are going ahead and telling we will give you in rodtp some little scripts which are there sir duty credit is issued against b point can you see over here against export of notified goods under ftp i have gone ahead and showed you the notified goods also can i go ahead everyone number 2 sir what are the silent features i am teaching you bullet number 1 done bullet number 2 done bullet number 3 sir value of the goods for calculation of script will be the declared fob now fob people will go ahead and declare more so they told market price ka 1.5 time maximum are we clear everyone on that you will be given what duty script then the next one over here is refund in the form of duty credit would be credited to the e credit ledger under the custom automated system see i am teaching you the silent features of the rodtp then sir duty credit shall be used only to pay basic custom duty then duty credit that is credit are freely transferable to other importers no rebate with respect to duties and taxes already exempted remitted or credited then who are the people who are eligible all exporters of eligible rodtp exported item the list which i showed you are all those are rodtp ka items if you are going ahead and exporting those items you can go ahead and take trips now what happened government will go ahead and find out in the industry that okay this item when it is exported what are the taxes which are borne by a person which are not being given back to him so government fixes one average percentage that on an average a person who is exporting this item this duty is still borne by him baba do you think i will bear the duty i will go ahead and make the goods expensive and export outside india do you think i am a fool that i will go ahead and bear the duty so government went ahead and told under rodtp we will give you script don't go ahead and send indian goods ka tax ka burden outside india everyone over here reward will be given what are they telling rebate would be granted at the rate which is a percentage of the fob with a value cap per unit can you see over here i hope you guys remember i showed you value cap per unit will be there and percentage will also be given percentage will be given on the value cap otherwise people will go ahead and start showing more then they are telling over here for some for some item a fixed rebate per unit may also be fixed are we clear fixed amount also they can go ahead and say here they told percentage they can tell one shirt one rupee then sir rebate is not dependent on export realization means sir export means taking from india outside india over export you will go ahead and take the rodtp ka benefit they are telling but non receipt of foreign exchange within time limit as per fema deemed that rebate was never allowed it will be deemed that rebate was never allowed to you ineligible supplies or items or categories export of import export of imported goods in same form baba government is promoting make in india you got some goods from outside india and exporting as such they are telling rodtp benefit will not be given export of imported goods in the same form export through transhipment i got from outside india in one ship unloaded loaded in another ship and exported is it 
they will give you rodtp nothing make in india think always make in india export product subject to minimum export price or duty if they have gone ahead and if there is some export product on which minimum export price is fixed for those product rodtp scheme will not be given product which are restricted or prohibited under ftp they are telling first of all we don't want to go ahead and export this or these are restricted and i will give you chocolate also for exporting they will not give products manufactured in electronic hardware technology park bio technology park sir all this electronic hardware technology park biotechnology park already they are given lot of benefit whenever they are buying no duty is there again what chocolate do you want again what benefit do you want next sir deemed export i will go ahead and teach about deemed export for deemed export also you will not go ahead and get any scripts product manufactured in warehouse baba you got from outside india in the warehouse only you manufactured and send it outside india did you pay any duty on that product so they are going ahead and telling all those goods which are manufactured in the warehouse will not give any rodtp products manufactured or exported by 100% eu also they will not give you any benefit everyone remember one thing they can go ahead and ask a small question on rodtp please be very careful about it everyone or over here now now this was chapter number 3 chapter number 4 goes ahead and says a duty exemption or remission scheme sir what do you mean by remission scheme everyone listen do you remember duty drawback do you remember duty drawback one minute see foreign trade policy duty drawback sir if you go ahead and import into india 100 percent of the duty you pay if you export you will get how much duty drawback 98 percent or as per all industry rate etc right everyone import x as such then it is 98 percent if you go ahead and import and then manufacture and export it is all industry rate brand rate etc i told sir i want to import now if i am an importer i am telling sir i want to import from outside india i want to import from outside india but i don't have money sir if i pay duty sir see i will pay you you will pay me back what is the requirement let me import free and i will go ahead and export you go to the director general of foreign trade and tell him sir please please let me go ahead director general of foreign trade you please let me go ahead and import give me one letter he will give you an advance authorization which you have to apply online only if he gives you the advance authorization you can go ahead and get it import without any duty but he will tell you see you have to show me dreams Okay, dreams you have to show him. What is his dream? Foreign currency. That sir, when I get no goods, I will spend only hundred dollar. When I go ahead and export, I will earn hundred and fifteen dollar. Value addition has to be shown to him. Are we clear? See, this was your remission scheme which is there. We are now going ahead and not talking about remission scheme. We are talking about duty exemption. He is telling sir, remission and all not required. I will pay, take back, not required. I will not pay also. I will not take back also. That is duty exemption. Duty exemption enables duty free import of imports for export promotion, including replenishment of imports or duty remission. Everyone over here. One scheme is advanced authorization scheme. One is duty free import authorization. Sir, how do I go ahead and take this authorization? If you go ahead and see over here, the DGFT ka office, see services. In services, can you see advance authorization or DFIA? You can go ahead and apply for it. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, everyone over here, they are telling what is it? What is an advance authorization? It's a scheme to import inputs used in manufacture of exported goods without payment of any duty, but subject to a value addition of 15%. They are telling you can get inputs. You don't have to pay any duty. Inputs only, okay everyone? But, sir, you have to go ahead and make a minimum value addition of how much? 15%. Your CIF which was there was 100. Your FOB which is there should be at least 115. CIF of the imported raw material was $100. You have to get at least FOB of how much? 115 so that you earn that much. Next. Sir, what are the material which is covered? Inputs which are physically incorporated in the exported goods. Means I am going ahead and making shirt and exporting. They will tell, okay, shirt ka cloth you can get. Plus I told, sir, in addition to that fuel oil catalyst may also be allowed he can go ahead and allow you some other small small items also mandatory spares required to be exported with the resultant product might be i am going in and exporting a bike along with that i have to give some spares 
those also they will go ahead and allow you 10 percent of the cif of the advance authorization item reserved for ste state trading enterprises cannot be imported by against advance authorization always remember if i have got an advance authorization i only have to import it is actual user condition what is the actual user condition if they have told in that if they have given you an advance authorization it is always actual user condition based means actual who has got the advance authorization he only has to go ahead and import it is never transferable i can't give it to my friend hey you import no problem no see you have to go and show the dgft sir i have an order for export one lakh unit ka export ka order is there sir i will get foreign currency only then he will give you an advance authorization but he will tell you i am giving you advance authorization but make sure you earn 15 percent sir minimum value addition is greater than equal to 15 percent tk case may how much 50 percent standard input and output norm everyone listen import will be based on standard input output norm i told sir to make this bottle i need one kg of steel i will i have an order for one lakh unit sir you see i will get foreign currency one lakh unit ka order is there so, 1 lakh kg he will allow you if it is told as per C on. Standard input output norms which are there, I think you guys can see over here only. Yes, everyone, C on is given. For every item, they have gone ahead and fixed a C on. Can I go ahead, everyone? Sir, for my item, C on is not there. Then what will happen? Then, sir, you can go ahead and do on the basis of cell declaration or applicant specific prior fixation by the norm committee you can go to the norm committee and they can go ahead and fix for some people self ratification scheme is also allowed they can only go ahead and say the c on and they can go ahead and import then sir export obligation to be fulfilled within how much time 18 months from the date of issue then they are going ahead and telling who are the people who are exempted what are the sorry what are the people what are the things which are exempted basic custom duty Additional duties of custom. What are the additional custom duties? CVDs are there. Safeguard duties are there. All those will be. You don't have to go ahead and pay. It will be exempted. Sir, IGST and GST compensation says is also exempted till 30th June 2022. Remember 30th June 2022. Can we go ahead everyone? Now, sir, the same way how you got advance authorization. See, advance authorization is sir, you went to the DGFT. You went to the DGFT and told him, sir, I have a order. I have an order in my hand, sir. Please allow me to go ahead and import duty free. I will make goods and export. So he will allow you to import. You will make the goods and you will go ahead and export. Right, everyone? But in DFI, what happened? Here too, you have gone ahead and shown him the order. Now here, if sub in DFI, what happened? Duty free import authorization is given. You went and told DGFT, hey, sir, please give me advance authorization. No, he'll tell first, prove yourself. Are we clear? So you go ahead and make an application and tell, sir, I will prove myself. You go ahead and export. After you export, to replenish means your stores would have got over. Your go down may raw material would have got over. To get your raw material back, he will give you an duty free import authorization but duty free import authorization is based on what first export then he will allow you to import duty free import authorization will be given duty free import authorization is nothing other than replenishment whatever your raw material is used for export he will tell you now you can go ahead and import are you guys able to understand but advance authorization was what in advance before you go ahead and export you take the advance authorization can we go ahead everyone here it's a post exportation facility to import inputs used in the manufacture of exported product without payment of basic custom duty. I mean, they are telling whatever exported products were there, you already exported. Now, whatever inputs you have used it, we will go ahead and give you a duty free import authorization. Those inputs, you can fill your stores back by getting the inputs duty free. Can I go? Because first you export it. Next, everyone over here. So, first you have to go online and tell the dgft that sir i am going to go ahead and export first you have to go ahead and tell him can you see over here one minute see first dfi may one is advanced authorization one is dfia for dfi first you have to inform him that sir i will go ahead and export once you go ahead and export tell him sir i have exported then he will give you duty free import authorization that for your next export you can go ahead and import are we clear everyone yes sir point is clear now Sir, only inputs required for production of goods is allowed. Here, inputs which are physically import, 
physically incorporated including fuel oil etc was also allowed mandatory spares was also allowed of the 10 percent of the cf value but here they are telling only inputs will be allowed basically a raw material will be allowed to be imported then in addition fuel will not be allowed here remember oil will be allowed catalyst may also be allowed next sir are they transferable power oh, this was not transferable but this is transferable remember this is transferable why sir i export it i don't want input anymore i will not export i will give it to my friend let him import so they are telling it is transferable here actual user condition is not there are we clear everyone actual user condition is not there but in this uh, other one which I had gone ahead and taught you, advanced authorization, my actual user condition is there. What is actual user condition? If it is given to me, only I can import. But in this DFIA, actual user condition is not there. Given to me, I can transfer it to someone else and he can go ahead and import. Then it is telling value addition here is how much? 20%. Advanced authorization was how much? 15%. Sir, how do you find out value addition? Value addition is nothing other than FOB minus CIF divided by the CIF into 100 will give you the value addition. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, DFI is issued only if CON has been notified. Here, even if CON is not there, on the basis of self ratification or self declaration or after fixation by the norm committee, they will go ahead and allow you. But here, only if CON has been fixed, they will go ahead and give you DFI. Are we clear everyone? The next one, export shall be completed within 12 months from the date of online application baba you have to go online and say sir i will go ahead and export export should be completed within 12 months sir only basic custom duty will be exempted over here here all additional duty is also exempted gst also exempted but here only basic custom duty you don't have to pay when you are importing the inputs no later when you are importing the input based on dfia you don't have to go sir who will make sure that you have dfia custom department wherein when you are importing they will say i hey, show me the advance authorization Show me the DFIA. Who will issue? DGFT. Are we clear everyone? Everyone, GST is always payable. Basic custom duty is not payable, but GST is always payable. Here GST is exempted. Here basic custom duty, additional duty, all are exempted. But here only basic custom duty. You and sir, every time I have to come for advance authorization, full year kill you give me one advance authorization. So Baba, annual advance authorization is also issued. Exporters with at least past two years performances means who are trustworthy. Annual advance authorization 300% of the FOB of physical export in the preceding financial year and or FOR value multiplied by what? One minute. Just a minute. Everyone over here, listen. 300% of the FOB 300% of the FOB value of physical export in the preceding financial year. In the preceding financial year, whatever I have gone ahead and exported, of that whatever was the FOB, of that how much they will give? 300%. Or FOR value, or FOR value, they are telling, see over here everyone, or FOR value of what? Deemed export in preceding financial year. FOR value of of. Of it should be multiplied means of no so of of deemed export in the preceding financial year sir what is FOR over here free on road freight on road everyone listen now in India when you are going ahead and giving it to deemed export Baba if I give it to someone who will go ahead and export do you remember anyone has an advance authorization I gave it to him and he will go ahead and export so my supply is a deemed export so or 1 crore, whichever is higher. What they are telling is 300% of the FOB or 100 crore, sorry, 1 crore, whichever is higher, will be basically given as an annual advance authorization. See over here, everyone. Sir, 300% of the FOB of physical export and or FOB of deemed export in case, FOR of deemed export in case of physical, in preceding financial year or 1 crore, whichever is higher. Done everyone. The next one over here is basically 300% of the last year ka FOB ka export or if you have supplied in India deemed export of that amount 300% or 1 crore whichever is higher. Everyone over here is the point clear till here. Chapter number 1 I went ahead and taught you which was legal framework 
एंड ट्रेड फैसिलिटेशन चैप्टर नंबर टू आई टॉट यू जनरल रूल्स फॉर इंपोर्ट और एक्सपोर्ट आर ओ डी टी पी सी चैप्टर नंबर थ्री आई टॉट यू विच वॉज एक्सपोर्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया स्कीम स्टेटस होल्डर आई टॉट यू आर ओ डी टी पी आई टॉट यू चैप्टर नंबर फोर एडवांस ऑथराइजेशन एंड डी एफ आई आई वेंटेड एंड टॉट यू नाउ सर प्लीज अलाउ मी टू इम्पोर्ट कैपिटल गुड्स इफ यू अलाउ मी टू इम्पोर्ट कैपिटल गुड्स आई विल मेक क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट्स एंड एक्सपोर्ट सर I will get foreign currency. The time you say foreign currency, he will become very happy and give you export promotion capital goods. Kill your authorization. Are we clear, everyone? Export promotion capital goods scheme, sir. First, import capital goods without payment of custom duty. But then you have to fulfill the export obligation. What is export obligation, everyone? You know what? He will tell you. You import from outside India. Capital goods, hundred crore ka capital goods. You don't pay ten crore ka duty. I will. You don't have to pay. No problem. But sir, in your next six years, whatever duty I have gone ahead and you have not paid, no. How much duty you did not pay? Ten crore. Ten crore into six times sixty crore. Incremental export has to be done. It is not what you are already exporting because of the machine. You show dream that my export will increase. So your incremental export has to be six times. That is your export obligation. So they are going ahead and telling, sir, you can go ahead and import, sir. First, import capital goods without payment of custom duty, but then fulfill the export obligation, sir. GST is also exempted up till 30th of June 2022. It means custom duties are also not payable. GST is also not payable, sir. What is post EPCG scheme? First, if what is post EPCG scheme is first you can go ahead and import capital goods. Then on full duty payment later, basic custom duty paid will be given back to you. Are we clear, everyone? In the form of freely duty, freely transferable duty credit script. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. One scheme which I told you is first get the get the capital goods. Ten crore ka duty is there. Don't pay the duty. Now you can go ahead and manufacture the goods and export. But what they are telling is your incremental export has. See what you are exporting earlier. Same export has to be maintained, but 10 crore i've saved no in 6 you have to maintain 10 crore into 6 60 crore you have to earn in the next 6 years and give it to me that's your export obligation basically foreign currency has to come in six time of the duty saved everyone over here now they are going ahead and telling what is post epcg scheme you go ahead and import everyone you import you import when you import the capital goods you pay the duty Later, this duty pay whatever this basic custom duty was paid. No, they will go ahead and give it back to you in the form of scripts. See, in post EPC this came first import capital goods on duty payment. Later, basic custom duty is remitted in the form of freely transferable duty script. Sir, specific export obligation is how much? Eighty five percent. They are telling over here your export obligation will be how much? Only eighty five percent. Then. Sir, next EPCG authorization can also be issued for import of capital goods under notified project import. Sir, metro project is there, monorail project is there, industrial project is there, any project, airport development project is there. All those projects are being notified. Metro rail, monorail, all these projects are being notified by the government. If for that you are going ahead and importing, they are telling EPCG authorization can also be issued for import of capital goods under project import to make a big project. Which has been notified by the government. If you need any plant and machinery, you can go ahead and import, and government will give you the EPCG authorization. Imports under this scheme is subject to fulfilment of export obligation based on the duty saved. You saved ten crore ka duty, ten crore into six times sixty crore. You have to go ahead and get export obligation is how much? How much export you have to do? Sixty crore. That is the incremental. next sir two export obligations are imposed specific exporting obligation which is export obligation equal to six time of the duty same you saved supposedly 10 crore ka duty how much do you have to go ahead and export 60 crore you have to go ahead and export that is your incremental export and it says such export obligation to be fulfilled in how many year six year from the date of issue of authorization average export obligation also you have to maintain What is the average export, sir? I was already exporting hundred crore. Whatever you are exporting, that too you have to maintain. They are telling export obligation mentioned above shall be over and above the average level of export achieved by the applicant in the preceding three license year for the same or similar product with the overall 
export obligation period everyone listen last year whatever you have gone ahead and exported last three license year whatever you have gone ahead and exported of that average will be taken last three years if you had exported on an average 10 crore that too you have to do additionally you have to go ahead and earn and give them how much 60 crore over the next sir suppose if this year duty saved is 10 crore 10 crore into say 6 is 60 crore 60 crore over the next six years you will have to earn and give that is over and above the over and above the general export which you are going ahead and doing it is not that sir general export which you are doing that came down and you are telling i am only fulfilling the specific export obligation no one is your export obligation one is your one is your specific export obligation duty saved ka three time incremental export has to be done can i go ahead everyone next sir you can procure capital goods used in production before production pre production post production okay before production if you need any capital goods during production if you need any capital goods after production if you need any capital goods from global or domestic market anywhere you can go ahead and buy so everyone listen if you go ahead and director general of foreign trade went ahead and gave you a capital goods uh, export promotion capital goods ka authorization you can go ahead and import from outside india also and you have to pay in forex but sir can i go ahead and take it from a person in india also yes baba when you go ahead and take it from a person in india it is known as deemed export i hope you guys understand yes sir now they are going ahead and telling capital goods can also be imported in complete knockdown or semi knockdown to be assembled in india you got a big plant and machinery from outside india and you uh, completely broken it and you have got it you can assemble it in india also they are going ahead and telling import of capital goods is subject to actual user condition if i am being given the advance authorization only i can go ahead and import capital goods shall be can be sold or transferred only after completion of the export obligation indigenous sourcing sir if i go ahead and take domestically the capital goods i have not spent forex yes or no everyone so they are telling your export obligation i will reduce it only to 75 percent uh, otherwise it is how much six time six time otherwise it is six time everyone yes or no can i go ahead everyone sir what was this 85 percent 85 percent was post export sir sorry first i imported i paid the duty first i imported i paid the duty this basic custom duty will be returned to me but what is my export obligation 85 percent sir if i first went ahead and imported First paid custom duty, then I am going ahead and exporting, making goods and exporting. Basic custom duty will be given back to me. But my export obligation is only 85% of the duty saved. Clear? But sir, if supposingly I went ahead and got the capital goods, did not pay the duty, then my export obligation is how much? Six times. Sir, if I go ahead and buy the goods in India, I did not pay the duty. I bought it from a person in India only. I saved foreign currency. Your export obligation is how much? Only 75%. Baba, when you take it from a person in India, that time whatever duty you have not paid, of that you have to pay how much? 75%. Now, sir, EOU, EOU, ESTP, Software Export uh, Oriented Unit, e Electronic Hardware Technology Park, Software Technology Park, Biotechnology Park, Import Capital Goods, Inputs Without Payment of Duty. You know why? EOU, ESTP, Biotechnology Park, Software Technology Park, all these are make in India. They will make, 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 export, 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 get foreign currency. So, government is very happy with them. Government told if you are establishing yourself as a EOU or ESTP or STP or biotechnology park, we will go ahead and allow you to import anything, imports, capital goods without payment of any duty. Units undertaking to export entire production may be set up under what? EOU or ESTP or software technology park or biotechnology park. Only if you are promising that I will go ahead and export everything, you should set up over there in a, in a software technology park or biotechnology park or EOU. Sir, and units undertaking to export entire production may be set up under the EOU or ESTP or STP or BTP scheme for manufacture of goods including repairs, remake, reconditioning, re-engineering, re rendering of service, development of software, etc. All these activities can be done by them. They can make, repair, sir, make software, etc. and export. Then, sir, trading units are not covered. Why? We are promoting make in India. You are telling, I will buy, I will export. You are not allowed anything. Are we clear? Baba, all these people are basically going to produce software, biotechnology, 
government is telling make in india i am promoting i am not promoting trading buying from outside india exporting outside india are we clear everyone those trading units will not be allowed eou estp stp btps can start production within how much time two years of grant of uh, lop is letter of permission or letter of intent letter of permission or letter of intent done everyone everyone over here only projects having minimum investment of how much 1 crore plant and machinery shall be considered for what eou EOU may if you want to set yourself up, how much plant and machinery may investment? 1 crore. This shall not apply to EOU, oh sorry, ESTP, Electronic Hardware Technology Park, Software Technology Park, Biotechnology Park, EOUs in handicraft. Baba, handicraft wala, you are telling 1 crore, you have to minimum invest. Sir, handicraft, agriculture, horticulture, aquaculture, animal husbandry, information technology, software, brass hardware and handmade jewelry sector for these people one crore ka limit not applicable they must have positive net foreign exchange earner they must have a for negative foreign exchange sorry positive exchange earning 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 okay everyone means how much you have spent how much you you have earned earning should be more than your spending which shall be cumulatively in a block of five years starting from production from production till date, they will go ahead and see what you have earned in foreign currency and what you have spent in foreign currency. Have you made any benefit in foreign currency or not? Are we clear everyone? They should have positive, uh, positive, uh, basically earning which is there, foreign exchange earning. Sir, entitlement for supply from DTA to EOU. Domestic tariff area, say if you are supplying to EOU, it will be regarded as deemed export. EOU ESTP. DTA unit shall be entitled to deemed export ka benefit. Whoever is the domestic tariff area wala unit, if they are supplying to EOU, ESTP, Software Technology Park, it will be deemed as a export, deemed export ka benefit will be given to them. Sir, I, R, E, refund, e fund it has become, refund. Refund of GST paid on such supply also will be given. Baba, whatever is the GST? It will be refunded. Deemed export may refund is given under GST. So if I am going and supply to a person which is deemed export, whatever GST I have paid, I will be able to claim a refund. Application within two years, RFD01. Can I go ahead, everyone? Yes. In addition, EOU, ESTP, STP, BTP shall not pay basic custom duty, IGST says on imported goods till 30th of June. Means if I am a software technology park, etc., I can go ahead and import and without payment of any duty. IGST and GST compensation says is also exempted. ITC will be available on input or capital goods if you have gone ahead and paid any uh, domestic area, may if you have gone ahead and purchased and paid any GST on inputs and capital goods that will be available to you. Are we clear everyone? Next. Sir, inter-unit transfer of manufactured goods and capital goods. Sir, can I go ahead and transfer from one EOU, ESTP, STP to another Yes, it is allowed on payment of GST and compensation says with prior intimation to whom? Concerned Development Commissioner and Custom Authority. Sir, can I exit from the EOU scheme? I want to exit. You can take the approval of the Development Commissioner and payment of applicable GST and says basically EOU say you will go ahead and take out all your goods, inputs which you had imported without paying any duty. They are telling you have to pay all the duty and GST compensation says which is applicable. If you have not achieved your obligations, then you will have to pin, you will be penalized also. Sir, sale of unutilized material including capital goods and spares and services. They are going ahead and telling if you transfer to another EOU, ESTP, STP, BTP, it will be treated as import for the receiver. I have, you have gone ahead and sold it to me. One EOU has gone ahead and sold it to me. It will be treated as what? Imports uh, or disposed of in the domestic tariff area. Then, Baba, you have to pay GST and basic custom duty or you can go ahead and export it also. Everyone over here, what chapter number 7 over here, what did we learn? We went ahead and learned chapter number 1, 
legal framework and trade facilitation. We learned general provision relating to import and export. We went ahead and learned export from India scheme. I went ahead and taught you RODTP. I taught chapter number 4 which is there. Then I went ahead and told you chapter number 5, chapter number 6 and now chapter number 7 which is deemed export over here. Can you see over here? Deemed export transaction in which goods don't leave India and payment is received in INR or foreign currency and it will be deemed as a export. Sir, deemed export ka benefit will be given to the supplier basically. Sir, if you are supplying under an advance authorization, sir, one person had advance authorization. I went ahead and supplied to this person and he gave me the advance authorization. What is my supply? Deemed export. In GST, we went ahead and learned AA, AE, boys, PG. Sir, advance authorization ka person ko if you are supplying, EOU ko if you are supplying, sir, EPCG holder ko if you are supplying, sir, if you are supplying bank or PSU is supplying gold. Then also it is deemed export. But here it is different. Here deemed export ka definition is different. Supplies under advance authorization or DFI. If someone has an advance authorization or DFI and you are supplying to him, it's your deemed export. Supply to EOU, ESTP, STP, BTP is also deemed export. Supplies against export promotion capital goods authorization. This was advance authorization. This is export promotion capital goods authorization. Supply of maritime freight container. By 100% EOU. Baba, there is a 100% export oriented unit. And they make these containers. For what is container? Baba, in the ship containers will go no. These containers they are going ahead and making. And if these containers are being supplied by the, these people. By whom? EOU. Then it will be termed as what? Deemed export. Deemed export. Because it will go outside India, come back. Go outside India, come back. So whenever they are going ahead and supplying maritime freight container. Maritime freight container means containers which will be used in the ships also it will be known as deemed export supplies to mega power project nuclear project united nation or international international organization for official use then also it will be deemed export they can go ahead and ask you what are the items which are classified as deemed export under ftp everyone over here now now listen to me very carefully please come back to the general provisions which were left out provisions relating to import of goods Everyone, there are some general provisions which are given which affect to provision relating to import and provision relating to export. Everyone over here, actual user condition. Always remember one thing, goods which are imported freely may be imported by any person. However, if such goods are required and authorization, might be restriction is there and authorization is given, then authorization is subject to actual user condition means the person who has been given an authorization to import only can import. Unless DGFT deletes that, okay, actual user condition, I am dispensing it off. Otherwise, always actual condition, actual user condition is there. So, they are telling, however, if imports require an authorization, means restricted import, such actual user condition alone, actual user alone may import such goods unless actual user condition is specifically dispensed by the DGFT. Always remember one thing, if you have got an authorization, if you have got a authorization or might be have gone ahead and taken any permission always remember it is always subject to actual user condition he will give you means you only should use it unless he specifically dispenses it off that okay you can go ahead and transfer it also otherwise it is always actual user condition if any permission any authorization is given to you always it is actual user condition next sir import baba dfi is not actual user condition dfi Import of second hand goods. Sir, can I get second hand goods from outside India? These are telling general provision relating to import. Secondly, sir, second hand goods including capital, uh, second hand capital goods including refurbished, reconditioned, spare, freely allowed. No problem. Sir, second hand PCs, laptop, photocopier, AC, DG set allowed only against authorization. Second hand goods except capital goods shall be restricted only allowed against authorization. So, you should know that, sir, if I want to get second hand goods, what to do here? Next, sir, scrap, SEZ may some scrap was there. If you go ahead and clear in the domestic tariff area, then see here. Any waste or scrap or remnant, including any form of metallic waste or scrap generated during manufacturing processing activity of an SEZ shall be allowed to be dispensed in the domestic tariff area freely subject to custom duty payment. Because SCZ when it got from outside India, it did not pay any duty. When you are clearing in the domestic tariff area, you are pay, required to pay 
custom duty. Import of gift. You know what? People were going ahead and getting goods from outside India saying, sir, gift. Gift has come from my sister in US, brother in US. Import of goods, including those purchased from e-com portal through post or courier where custom clearance is sought as gift. See, Baba, otherwise, courier pay 100% duty is there. But if you are telling gift, gift, nothing allowed as gift. They are telling is prohibited, not allowed only other than life-saving drug or medicine. Medicines can be gifted and can be allowed. And Rakhi. Rakhi? Brother, sister. Baba, but they are going ahead and telling, don't go ahead and talk about gift for Rakhi. Your brother send you, your sister send you Rakhi, that is okay. Gift for Rakhi not allowed that. Baba, you have to clear only on payment of duty. You can't clear it as gift. Are we clear everyone? Next. Otherwise, whole year people will play. Okay, sir, brother, sister, brother, sister, gift has come, Rakhi gift has come, government is selling. No, Baba, no, we will not go ahead and allow any gift. Can I go ahead? Otherwise, people will accumulate whole year. On the day of Rakhi, they will send all the gift. <laughs> they are telling no. Sir, import of sample. No authorization is required for import of bona fide technical and trade sample. Importable freely. Samples up to 3 lakh. Can, Baba, these are general provisions. When you are importing or exporting, general provision. Sir, 3 lakh can be imported by all exported without any duty. Authorization for import of sample is required in case of vegetable, seeds, bees and new drugs. Tea sample up to 2000 CIF per consignment allowed without any authorization. CIF value how much? 2000 can be imported without any authorization. They can ask you one small provision saying, sir, write a note on import of samples under uh, under uh, FTP. Next, sir, passenger baggage. Are, sir, passenger baggage. You remember what we learned in custom was followed from here only. This was the bus. That was the custom rules which was made. Everyone here, bona fide household goods, personal effect may be imported. And that is why under customs rules, we are allowed. Terms and condition of baggage rule 1998 is applicable. Samples of freely importable item. Whatever is the freely importable item, the samples we have learned now, may be imported in baggage without any authorization. Exporters coming from abroad allowed drawings, patterns. Who are exporters? Sir, we are going to export. So, might be you would have gone abroad. So, when you are coming from abroad, you can get drawings, labels, price tag, button, belt, trimmer without any authorization. Then, re-import of goods repaired abroad. Sir, I send the goods to repair. Going. Sir, re-importation is fresh import. You exported the goods for repair. It will come back. Re-importation is what? Fresh importation. Sir, Capital goods, equipment, component, part and accessories sent abroad for repair, re-import without any... Here they are telling you don't need any authorization. In section number 20 of the custom act, they told, sir, going and coming up here plus fair cost of repair plus material pay, duty has to be paid. That is custom act. Here they are telling, DGFT don't come to me. Not required. Authorization not required. You send, get it repaired, get it. Otherwise everyone, sir, I am sending one machine for repair. Give me authorization. DGFT telling, I get lost. Not required. Authorization only is not required. Next. Then they are telling over here, import of goods, including capital goods, used in project abroad. I have gone ahead and taken some goods from India, outside India, for a project outside India. Can happen or not? I took some capital goods from India to do a project outside India. Might be I am undertaking one metro project outside India. They are telling re-import after completion of the project without any authorization provided you have used at least how much year? One year outside India. Import under lease financing. Can I go ahead and import under lease financing? Freely permittable. No permission is required. However, some cases RBI approval is required. Sir, clearance of goods for custom may also be cleared against advance authorization issued subsequently facility not applicable to restricted or state trading enterprises ka item. Everyone over here now. Free export. Sir, can I go ahead and export free, free, free? See here. All goods may be exported without any restriction except to the extent that such export is regulated by ITCHS. Baba, you have to see. I, one minute, I will show you. Here, see here everyone. Import, export. In export policy, here I taught you import policy. Can you see export policy? In here, restricted will be there, prohibited will be there. If it is restricted or prohibited, otherwise it is always free. 
any other provision it says all goods may be exported without any restriction except to the extent that such exported goods is regulated by ITCHS means if it is told in the ITCHS that sir it can be exported only by state trading enterprise it is restricted or prohibited prohibited means you can't send restricted means you need an authorization then it says or any other provision of FTP or any other law if it is prohibited by uh, so you have to go ahead and see the ITCHS you have to see any other law or you have to see any other provision of FTP if it is not prohibited not restricted then freely exportable then it says GGFT may however specify through a public notice such terms and condition according to which any goods not included in the ITCHS may be exported without authorization DGFT has that power sir export of gifts they are telling goods including edible item of value less than equal to 5 lakh in a license year may be exported as gift however restricted items shall not be exported without authorization third party export what do you mean by third party export do you remember merchant exporters they will buy from third parties put it in a container and export do you remember merchant exporters who will buy from all the people who are manufacturers and they will put it in a container and export outside india those people are known as what known as what merchant exporter now they are telling third party export means export made by an exporter or manufacturer on behalf of other exporter might be two three exporters are there i am going in and exporting i took their goods i put it in a container and i exported then export document shall indicate the name of both manufacturer exporter and or manufacturer and third party exporter i am also exporting my name also should be there other people whose goods also i am putting in the container and exporting their name also should be there it's in the shipping bill bank realization certificate export order invoice should be in the name of the third party exporter are we clear everyone you are going ahead and telling these are the third party their name pay bank realization certificate etc should be obtained can i go ahead everyone export promotion cap council everyone listen here export promotion council sir export promotion council i will go to uh, ministry of commerce everyone here in ministry of commerce if you go ahead and see here government have formed export promotion councils where are the export promotion councils not to be seen only wait somewhere it will be hiding here 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 export promotion council these are export promotion council sector specific they have gone ahead and created export promotion council who will go to other countries and see what is the need of that product in which country the requirement is there and they will try to promote that product are we clear everyone these are the export promotion council can you see council of leather they will make sure that all the leather items which are there are being exported where the need of that leather is there like that we have pharmaceutical export promotion council we have indian oil seeds and produce like this lot of export promotion cashew export promotion council is there so like this they are going ahead and telling over here export promotion council these are organizations set up with the objective to promote and export promote and develop indian export export promotion council is responsible for promotion of a particular product project or service if exporter intends to obtain export incentive if you want export incentive it has to mandatorily register himself with the export promotion council procedure is you have to give an application in anf 2 c then export promotion council will go ahead and issue you a registration come membership certificate registering him rmc rcmc means registration come membership certificate shall be valid for how much from 1st april of the year in which it was issued and remain valid for how many years five years they can go ahead and ask you a note on export promotion council remember sir what do you mean by registration come membership certificate it is issued by the export promotion council it's a certificate evidencing registration of an exporter as a member of export promotion council like apparel ka export promotion council is there cashew export promotion council is there then any person applying so if i'm a cashew manufacturer and i want export incentives i have to register myself with the export promotion council any person applying for authorization to import or export if you want an authorization or any other benefit concession under the ftp shall be required to furnish to the ggft website in import export profile 
RCMC certificate granted by the competent authority. Basically, you have to go to the, all these people and take your RCMC certificate if you want to go ahead and take authorization, incentives, etc. Then, sir, example, certificate of registration as export of spices issued by the spices board shall be treated as RCMC. Sir, export credit agencies. Now, for going ahead and exporting, there are credit agencies who are there who will go ahead and give you credit. They are telling our policy instrument from government to support export. Export credit agencies support exports by insuring, by insurance guarantee and also direct lending. They will give you money as direct lending. Also, export credit guarantee corporation of India provides credit insurance support and also export credit lending. Are we clear everyone? So now listen to me very carefully. Can you come down? The last chart everyone. It says foreign trade policy. Baba, this chapter which is there is a self-explanatory chapter. The only thing students don't read it is because it is lengthy. So in the fourth chart I have summarized it. You read that much. Solve your question answers. I think that much only it is worth the time. You should not be spending much time on it, right everyone? So that much only you should spend time on it. Principles of restrictions and prohibition for import and export revised in line with international agreement. You know what happened for importing and exporting an item? What are the principles? They have revised it. Sir, we will not go ahead and allow those items to be exported which are shortage in India. So what are the principles? Are we clear? For they are telling principles of restrictions and prohibition for import or export revised in line with, line with international international agreement. With effect from 10th of August, principles of restrictions and prohibition for import or export have been revised. DGFT may through a notification impose prohibition and restriction. Now they went ahead and told from India food grains can't be exported, prohibited. Why? Because shortage was there. So, Baba, when they can go ahead on export of foodstuff or other essential product, they can go ahead and impose prohibition when? When, sir, for preventing critical shortage. Otherwise, internationally, you are not allowed to stop any exports. As per international agreements, you are not allowed to stop any exports. But if there is critical shortage in my country, should I save myself or should I go ahead and save outside India? Then, sir, on export of necessary, on export... Uh, import and export necessary for the application of standard regulation for classification, grading or marketing of commodity in the international trade. Then they are going ahead and telling on import of fishery product, they can go ahead and impose restriction, import in any form for enforcement of governmental measure to restrict production of the domestic product or for certain other purpose. On import of on import to a safeguard country external finance position my, means government is telling we want to safeguard our country ka financial position we don't want to export because it will become unfavorable balance and to ensure level of reserves sir we want to maintain le level of reserves so we don't want to import we are creating a restriction then sir on import to promote establishment of a particular industry they can go ahead and say in india we want this industry to flourish if we go ahead and not impose restriction on import of this item this industry can never flourish because this this industry is now growing in india from outside india if goods will come those people are more competitive already so india may this industry can't flourish so we can impose restriction they are telling for prevention of sudden increase in the import for causing serious injury to the domestic producer if some imports are happening in huge quantity, I told you safeguard duty can be imposed. The same way restriction also can be imposed. What is safeguard measure? Sir, safeguard duty, tariff rate quota and also they can impose restriction. Are you guys able to understand everyone? Now, for protection of public morale, might be for public morale, they don't want any item to be imported for exported. For protection of human, animal, plant life, etc. They can go ahead and impose it restriction then sir might be one plant is there one animal is there outside india flu is there they are telling you can't get chickens into india only they can go ahead and impose a restriction they are going ahead and telling sir relating to importation and exportation of gold and silver they can go ahead and create restriction sir then necessary to secure compliance with the law and regulation 
including those relating to protection of patent, trademark, copyright, etc. If they want, they can go ahead and create a restriction. So these are basically the general thoughts which are there, general principles which are to be implemented by the government. Sir, see, at the time of, for protection of countries, essential security interest, at the time of war, all this time may they can go ahead and create all this restrictions etc baba this is just for your reading once please read and go at least three to four points you remember why sir because they can go ahead and ask you i think it is general explanatory everyone in line with international agreement they are telling we can go ahead and impose what principles of restriction and prohibition now why they will go ahead and impose you remember sir india may critical shortage is there why will not they not go ahead and impose restriction are we clear everyone they are telling india with this domestic industry i want to go ahead and flourish so they will tell this item should not be got into india might be there is a serious injury which is happening to domestic industry they can go ahead and restrict so these are the principles for importation and exportation pay when restriction can be implemented are we clear everyone here i will go ahead and close my discussion on foreign trade policy listen everyone now all you go ahead and read is your textbook solve question answers and you are done baba more than this foreign trade policy i think you should not be spending time you should solve question answers but though right everyone i'll go ahead and solve okay one minute everyone listen in this chapter also what is the most important points you should remember always sir iec code everyone mark this import export code is very important for exam you should remember Sir, what are the guiding principles which are there? You should remember the guiding principles. What are the measures taken to support the guiding principles? Export Promotion Council, RCMC certificates, then imports of samples you should remember. Sir, status holder is something which is important. RODTP scheme I have explained, EPCG scheme I have explained to you, advanced authorization DFI I have explained it to you. Uh, deemed export you should remember what are the various types of deemed export. Then sir, this EOU ESTP you know they go ahead and ask sometime a small question and this restrictions anyways I have gone ahead and told you 3 to 4 you can go ahead and remember. Right everyone, I will go ahead and close my discussion on foreign trade policy but don't forget you have to practice question answers right everyone we'll close our discussion on foreign trade policy over here everyone congratulations